Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. Joined as always by Justin Rogers. Day five uh, of Lions training camp in the books. Uh, we've talked ex extensively, Justin, about the offense and how crisp it's looked at times. Today was all about the defense. A lot of work on the two minute drill from the offense and it was the defense that ruled um, six drives, uh, zero points from, from the offenses. Uh, what was your big takeaway from what you saw in that um, exchange? Uh, offense kind of shooting itself in the foot, to be honest. There was a lot of drop passes. Um, a lot of mental mistakes, some bad passes, uh, some offensive line breakdowns in that segment. And yeah, the defense yeah. causes some of those things, but uh, Eric Ebron dropped a pass, Court Fuller dropped a pass, uh, Casey Pierce, the tight end, dropped a pass. Um, and, and that really set the offense back in those those um, segments where Jim Caldwell admitted that he put the, the offense in bad situations. He wanted to, to test them. They had to score a touchdown in 90 seconds from 70 yards out. Uh, they needed a field goal from 60 yards mm -hmm. out with 50 seconds, one time out. So he was really putting the pressure on them. But uh, and, and we didn't really see great play from the quarterback. I, I thought Stafford looked good with the backups, both Orlowski yeah. and Kellen Moore looked shaky. There was a huge drop-off, and, and not just in the quarterbacks, but in the pressure they were receiving. Um, I, the the off starting offensive line was okay. A um, little bit of pressure they allowed against the defensive line. But then it was it – was, uh, it was real bad, I thought, from the second and third units. The For defensive sure. line was all over the quarterbacks. Orlovsky was sacked a couple of times. Kellen Moore was sacked at least once. Um, and neither Orlovsky nor Moore looked very good, particularly Moore. I thought this was the worst day I'd seen from a long time in Kellen Moore because he's had, overall, I think, a pretty good offseason. Yeah. Um, but just in inaccurate today, the accuracy was all over the place, bad decisions. Um, but you have to give the defensive line credit, I think, too, because uh, we've got all, all kinds of questions about the defensive line and how it's going to fare. But I thought it was a good day from them and how much pressure they applied on the quarterbacks. Interceptions from Moore at the end of both of those drives, mm -hmm. uh, not tip balls or uh, just, just really bad throws pretty much right to the defender. Uh, speaking of the second-team defensive line, I, th I think Devin Taylor's really coming on strong. Uh, he had a really nice session mm -hmm. individually, uh, got some pressure in the, the team drills, and what I noticed about him is he just has this really extensive set of pass rush moves, and I think he's still kind of growing into a lot of them. Uh, I talked to Daryl Tapp today, and he said that, that Taylor came out and worked with him in Virginia during the six-week break. Uh, another good example of a young mm -hmm. player taking the time to latch himself to a veteran and uh, you know try to progress his game. It's a player I think the Lions really need to, to break out this year. I know we also have looked at Larry Webster, but I think Taylor's more – got a, a more refined game, more experience, and a bigger conference, and, and I think Taylor's really the guy that they need to look to to kind of break out in that pass rushing mold. You know who else had a good day in those one-on-one uh, offensive line, defensive line drills? I was there. Tell me. Riley Reef. And you pointed out the other day, but I thought Reef had a really good day today, um, going against Ziggy Ansah. Um, just He's looked good. He's looked, Reef has looked real good, and we've paid so much attention to Tomlinson and Ramirez in that competition there. Uh, Warford, obviously, the, the exchange that's happening at center. But, you know, quiet offseason from Reef. Uh, the Lions uh, picked up the contract uh, option for next year, but um, uh, I think he's had a very good week of practice. Um, and then uh, and then that helps, I think, because you have so much uncertainty right now on the right side with the injury to Waddle. Um, Lucas has practiced okay. We saw Michael Williams say working with the first team. Yeah. Just... Uh, maybe there's some depth there. Maybe it's a sign that Lucas isn't giving them what they want. Uh, I'm not really sure at this point, but you have to like at least the stability that Reef gives you on the left side at this point. Yeah, they might also be trying to rattle Lucas's cage a little bit, ten test him mentally to see how he responds. Uh, you might have missed it. There was one play where, where Ansa got up under the chest of Reef and almost <laughs> carried him to the tackle. I mean, <laughs> I didn't see it that. was just it was just one of those. I plays saw the one where, where he stoned him and stoned him coming, coming off of what we saw on Wednesday. I think uh, four for six Reef is in the three days that I've watched. Um, he. I, I noted in my notes, I expect at some point for that matchup to maybe end with some uh, extracurricular pushing. It's been a really physical matchup. Those two have been getting after it, and uh, you could just see a, a little bit of edginess when they're competing because, uh, I mean, Ansa's, you know, probably the most lethal athlete on the defense, and um, Reef's got a nasty streak to him. He really does. He's, yeah. he's been very physical, and, and I think he's been upping his game to keep up with Ansa in those situations and, and more than holding his own. Yeah, that's been a pretty gritty competition between those two guys. We even saw some uh, extracurriculars during, earlier in the offseason between those guys. Um, you know, just between the white lines type of stuff, nothing to be concerned about. But, yeah, there's there's chippiness, chippiness I think, between the two in a level of competition, and that's what you like to see, your best defensive lineman at this point going up against uh, your most stable 
of the most experienced uh, offensive linemen and some, some pretty good competitions uh, between be, between those, those two guys. Um, what are your thoughts on Michael Williams and, and his progression from tight end la- uh, two years ago to offensive lineman basically being redshirted last year to today being uh, with the starters? If you would asked me yesterday, I would, I would have thought maybe Corey Robinson was having a, a better camp, a more consistent camp. Uh, you know, there's, there's still some... Uh, technique tendencies with with Williams game with some of his footwork he gets a little deep I think on his on his pass rush anchoring but where he is now from when he first converted I mean you can you can see a, a really big uh, improvement and then Robinson had you know a pretty brutal day Devin Taylor just mauled him twice and and really made him look silly it's one of those things I mean it was like a you know, basketball video. We talk about breaking ankles. Yeah. You know, it was it was those kind of pass rushes. So I do want to point out that Rob, that Clay Robinson's had a pretty good off season uh, since the Lions drafted him. Yeah. And then you write a story about him and talk about him. And a day later, he looked awful. He was so overmatched. Yeah, I think he was the worst guy I saw in the field today. Uh, at least in that drill, for sure. Yeah. Um, but he had he had an offside, uh, at least one offsides during the um, during the team drills at the end too. It was just a overall. Poor day from him. A bad day from a lot of guys in the offense. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, Ebron. We talked about he he put a couple on the ground today. Corey Fuller, who has had a pretty sharp camp, um, had a, a really nice deep pass middle of the field. Orlovsky laid it right there in the bread basket, and he couldn't hold on to it. So, um, you know, it's one of those things. You, it's why you can't judge on these these little snapshots. Even a week is is not enough time. You know, it's the whole duration of camp where we're you know constantly evaluating. The coaches are constantly evaluating these players and. You know, at the end of the decision, they're going to have some tough decisions to make at that that end of the roster. One guy who didn't look bad on offense, Calvin Johnson. <laughs> Hell of a day from that guy. Hell of a day. I was watching actually, I was actually watching Darius Slade pretty closely because he's made news this week for saying uh, that, that he could cover anybody and they, you know call him the Earth because he can call he can cover anybody on the Earth and just some fun Darius Slade stuff. But I was watching him today. And then I realized he was on Calvin, and I see Calvin going into the corner. And I was on the far side of the field. I couldn't see. I couldn't see where the – all I could see was the trajectory of the ball, which was carrying, like, way out of bounds. And all of a sudden, I see Calvin peek out from the other side, catching the ball and getting his feet in against Darius Slay. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a great catch. It was a bomb. It was probably the best play we've seen so far through camp. Um, but maybe a humbling play, too, for, for, for Darius Slay. Because he's very good, but Calvin is – Kelvin Johnson, you know, yeah, he's gonna make those those kinds of plays. You know, I remember when you first came out here, and and the, I think the first time you really saw what Kelvin Johnson could do, and it, it catches you off guard. And uh, yeah. he he is a remarkable athlete. You see it in the games. I mean, you know, the Cincinnati catch and the Dallas catch where he makes it in the the triangle of traffic, and it's just like Stafford throwing it up and screaming jackpot mm-hmm. and hoping for the best. Um, I've been out here now for three years full time. Uh, you know, came out a little bit. You know, before that. And it's it's just been a constant stream of impressive catches that I guess I take for granted that I'm watching one of the greatest to ever play his position, and he just makes it look effortless. He really does. He's he's an amazing athlete. I, I can't say enough about Calvin Johnson as a football player. Covering Calvin Johnson in practice. Before I got on this beat, I obviously knew Calvin Johnson. Yeah. I'd seen him play. I'd seen these amazing catches, and you know that he's great at what he does. But covering Calvin Johnson in practice seeing what he does every day in practice when maybe you're going full tilt but maybe you're not and guys are just kind of messing around sometimes and things like that and seeing what he can still do in that environment that's been the greatest uh treat for me in my entire professional career i mean it's just unreal what that guy can do Um, i covered michigan university of michigan for two years before this had covered an 11 win season bcs all that pretty good college team at that time um and then you get my first day here and it's just like, wow, every, di- every guy is really good. And you knew that that was going to happen. But then I see Kelvin and just doing remarkable things. Um, yeah, it's, it, he's just a freak of nature. Um, and I wish every fan could get the treat of seeing him away from Sundays because he's great on Sundays. But when you can see him do that too on a practice and just doing crazy things that a human should not be able to do, it's just uh, just an impressive feat. Detroit fans have been lucky. I mean, for, for all the playoff woes that they've experienced or, or even lack of playoff woes, you know, to have – Barry Sanders followed up by Kelvin Johnson, I think, is yeah. uh, kind of makes up for it in some level to, to get to see two uniquely gifted athletes at you know through their entire careers, and you know mm-hmm. it's it's likely um, you know Kelvin will will play most, if not all, of his career here as well. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, that's what we got for today. Um, what Week one's in the books. Tomorrow uh, is the final practice of the week, and it's going to be a scrimmage, actually, 10.30 uh, a.m. at Allen Park. It's open to the public, so be here early if you want to see it. It'll be the first chance to, to see the, the, the team sort of in action. It's not going to be a full game-like uh, scenario, but there will be kickoffs and there will be uh, drives, and uh, it was a fun fun deal last year, the first chance to get to see the team. Um, break on mo on Sunday and then back at it next week. If you printed your practice schedule early, uh, they move the practice back from 9.30 to 10.30, so make sure you don't get here too early. Uh, if you're here, say hi to us. I always like seeing the, seeing the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Mikey. We are MLive. Keep it right here.